Here is the crankshaft out of that 1951 uh, Royal Enfield 350 bullet G2 model and uh, this is as as it's just been removed from the engine I haven't done anything with it yet I literally got it out of the engine had a look at it wiped it down and there's gonna be uh, some work needed on it and I'll probably end up splitting it one of the things is the, uh, the time inside main shaft here this portion of it runs direct in the bronze bush and this portion runs direct in an open roller bearing and unfortunately uh, the surface of it has got rather pitted you can actually see rusty imprints of the bearing rollers there so hopefully the camera will pick that up if not you might have to just take my word for it you can actually see the needle of the dial gauge flickering a little bit as it goes over the pits so that's really going to have to be changed unless I can come up with some sort of uh, needle race with an inner race that will slip over that to maybe replace it. I'll look into all that anyway. But I think under the circumstances it's probably going to be a good idea in view of everything else that's happened with this machine to split the crank anyway and have a look at the big end and uh, possibly even consider getting a replacement for that conrod if we can. Uh, they're not so easy to come by as the later post-1955 bullet conrods because these are narrower and uh, well, they, they're not in stock at Hitchcock's at the moment as I understand although there's a very expensive alternative that you can get but anyway for now I just want to spin this crank between centres and see what we've got as it came out the engine and we've got quite a bit of run out clock in there we've got about six thousandths of an inch showing on that clock and certainly good five possibly even six thousandths of an inch on that one the needles are rising and falling together so one does actually cancel the other out and this crank would have probably spun quite smoothly inside the main bearings um, had they been in reasonable order but they were in a terrible condition on the timing side so they're all gonna have to be replaced I'll probably have to replace this time inside main shaft as well which will mean splitting a crank and while I'm in there I'll get a good look at the big end and the crank pin as well and consider any options for the conrod if we can change it for something a little less battered and scarred. So that's the run out on this crank as it came out the engine. So I know that if I split it, if and when I put it back together, hopefully all sorted out. That I can aim for better than that if I can but at least they're like I say they're rising and falling together so that is nowhere near as bad as if they were going in opposite directions so uh, we'll see uh, where we go with that my next job I think is probably going to be to speak to the owner and then probably split this crank and see what we've got. 